today we're going to go through me building a, uh, a new camper, so to speak. Uh, it's a 1998 uh, Coleman Santa Fe camper that we started out with. And what we did is we ripped it down to nothing and we started fresh. Uh, we bought this in the spring. We used it a bunch of times this uh, summer. Uh, so we got some use out of it before. It looks similar to the one in the image here. Uh, then we decided we needed something not so much bigger um, because we're actually losing space in what we're doing, but uh, one that we can just walk in and out of, you know, uh, it's a solid camper, not a pop-up. We just don't like the idea that if one day a cable breaks, we're just out of a camping trip, you know, like then we got to bring it back home and do whatever. So. Uh, what we're doing is we're ripping this down to nothing. Uh, a lot of my footage of ripping it down is uh, MIA, so we're going to skip through some of that and we're probably going to start right where the camper is uh, just starting to be built. Um, I'm missing a little bit of footage here and there. I had to rush to get this done before the bad weather set in. Um, it's starting to get cold here now. Uh, and I needed to enclose this before we get a lot of rain and stuff. So at this moment in time, it's already enclosed and it's already canvassed. I skipped recording the canvas thing because we did that in another video. There's going to be a lot of like little details that we have to fix on the canvas uh, just because we did it quick and we need to make it look nice in the end. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get into a, just a quick run through of building this camper. I'm just going to run through at high speed. Like I say, it's missing a little bit here and there, but uh, I needed to get this done as fast as I could, so that's why it's quick. So we saved a lot of items from the old camper. Uh, the bed, pull-out beds, we recovered all the wood. We saved as much of the, the slides and the aluminum pieces and things like that. The rest of it's going to go to scrap, but uh, we want to have some of that in case we need it for things. But the actual base of the camper... Um, you'll see in a couple minutes is we we made it out of uh we put down new plywood that we sealed uh i don't know if that's going to be in the video but we took the plywood we sealed it with uh an asphalt style sealer it's a henry sealer i'll put a link down below for that um and then we uh use construction adhesive in between and we use the um these bed pieces of wood because they were still in pretty good shape we use them as a second layer on the floor. So uh, I'll show you that in a little bit, but uh, I just wanted to let you know we save whatever we can because these pieces of wood were actually in totally good shape. It's the entire base of this camper had issues, but it was fine, like I say, to use over the summer. But uh, there was a lot more that we found when we started digging into it. Like all the corners were rotted. Uh, it obviously was leaking a little bit this summer because uh, one corner that I had already fixed turned basically into mush. So it was slowly dripping into that spot, I guess, the entire summer. Okay, so this is the camper frame after we ripped everything down. Um, I took some pictures and videos of everything, like wiring-wise, so that way it shouldn't be that big of a deal to uh, put it all back. So here you see, this is when we were starting to cut out everything. Um, it took us three pieces of four by eight plywood to uh, make this uh, layout on there. You have to obviously cut it down. It doesn't use the whole thing completely. So uh, we're cutting it down here and then um, we're gonna end up putting on the second layer on top of this. So the thing you're not going to see in this video, uh, I think I missed recording it or we lost that footage, is uh, we we cut all this down, um, we pulled this to the side, we ended up coating everything with the Henry's asphalt emulsion, I believe that's what it's called, and then uh, we screwed the first layer down. Then we construction adhesive everything in between and... Uh, put down the second layer. So that second layer you see there, that is actually the beds that were originally in this camper. So uh, the bottom floor is actually slightly thicker than it was originally, and it's actually probably like 10 times stronger than it was. Um, using the construction adhesive helped a million fold. Um, it tightened everything right up. So uh, we shouldn't have to worry about anything with the floor because it's sealed now and uh, it, it's very tight. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start framing. So um, 
what you see me doing here is I'm just starting to lay things out, trying to figure out what's going where, and then I start cutting out some pieces to make sure everything is roughly correct in the back. Um, I end up framing out the entire back first. Um, a thing that I want to note on this is nothing is perfectly square from what I could find on this uh, camper frame. There's some minor variations from side to side, you know. Uh, if you actually went through and measured each piece, you'd find that there's probably an inch of leeway from one edge to another. Some of this can be attributed to where the wheel wells lined up. Um, you know, it's just not perfect. So I had to work with it and just do what I needed to do. So uh, this took approximately six days to get this thing ripped down um, and rebuilt into a frame and then canvassed. It was a lot of time, not exactly six days straight, but you know, it was a lot of time during the days, probably easily eight to 10 hours a day of just working on this. Um, so what I'm just doing here, I'm just laying everything out, getting it ready, and then I'm gonna start building that back frame. Another thing I wanted to note is wood quality currently because of the pandemic is just terrible. Um, if you look at the plywood on the trailer here, they're twisted and that was actually after letting it sit for a long time. Um, wood quality just I could not find. We hit we hit two or three stores and not, nobody had exactly what I needed so I ended up using um, as I built this uh, a lot of two by fours that I ripped down and there's going to be some more that are going to have to be ripped down just for extra structuring. Um, I did base structure on this to start uh, enough so that way I could sheathe it, cover it, and canvas it and paint everything so that way it'll be dry on the inside. I can come back and uh, restructure some of this stuff where we're putting the windows, etc. That'll all have to be restructured. But the big thing here is the wood quality was just awful. I could not get one by one, so I was using two by fours, cutting them in half so they're not exactly the right measurement, but they're stronger in my opinion. Um, but almost all the wood that we were able to get had some sort of twist to it. Uh, so not like that added to things not being exactly perfect and, you know, rushing doesn't help. But the camper comes out well in the end, you know. Um, we haven't wired it or anything at this point. Uh, that's the next step. I need to rewire the camper, put in lights, and uh, then we'll start figuring out how the interior goes. So the rest of this video is just framing out uh, the rest of the camper. I don't have all the footage. I have framing, I don't know, roughly 75% of it. Um, what's missed in this video is finishing the framing, uh, putting on the sheathing, and then, as I said earlier, the canvas I didn't bother recording. If you're interested in how to do uh, poor man's fiberglass, which is just canvas, uh, tight bond, uh, wood glue, and paint, um, I have another video that I will link in the description. It's um, it's on how to do everything, and uh, there's there's a couple different ways to do it. And uh, with my original camper that I built, it worked out just fine. Um, I ended up selling that one if anybody was interested uh, a while back. Um, it was just too small for us. We're three people, and it just wasn't big enough. I I built it as more of a if I could do this kind of thing and see how everything went. Um, this camper build basically just happened because we did, we we want a bigger I don't want to say bigger we want a a camper that does what we want it to do we don't need everything we don't want uh we've looked at a bunch of them and we saw how this thing was built and it was just built terrible really on the inside you know just to the the last the littlest amount you possibly could spend is what they put into the uh original pop-up camper here um I mean there's good things about it the frame's good the wiring uh, the devices they use are good, um, like I'm reusing the uh, inverter and everything that they had on there, and I'll be reusing the actual trailer lights and all that stuff. That's fine, it's just the connections they make, they weren't great, you know, they're those clip-on connectors. Um, I'll be going through and taking all that stuff out. Uh, the camper itself will be what we want, um, the inside, the final plan isn't exactly done yet, but uh, it's going to probably have... It's gonna have enough room for three people to sleep. Uh, it's not gonna have water storage on the inside. We're gonna store our water in jugs and it's gonna have a hookup on the outside that you put into water jugs. So that way there's no condensation from the water 
junk on the inside of the camper saves room saves the flooring saves everything in my opinion uh the stove is up to debate we're still trying to decide if we're just going to use a coleman stove in there or if we're going to put the original uh i say coleman the i have a portable coleman stove um or the original one that was in the camper it worked fine uh, we just don't know if we need it like we don't use the inside stove all that often so we might as well just use a propane canister with the portable one so i may actually if we decide we want we're putting the furnace in i'm gonna run propane lines to everything but we still may end up using a portable uh coleman stove so there's still a lot of little details we got to work out but the main structure is built and uh what we have to do now is wire and you know do the detail work on the outside we just want it to be watertight so that's why i got a canvas as quick as i could uh and like i said there's a lot to be desired on the outside of the camper at the moment but those are all details that we can do as we move through you know once it's watertight you're basically good to go you just have to go back through and uh you know fix up the edges put on trim if you want trim we may end up doing some trim just to cover up some of the seams and stuff in the canvas uh, nothing's perfect. Like I say, we want to make it what we want. We want it to be watertight. You know, we want it to be dry. We want it to be warm. So um, those little details we have to work out as we go. I will likely put the furnace back in. If I'm going to put the furnace back in, I'm going to do the propane lines for the stove, which could lead us down either road. Um, our furnace worked perfectly fine before uh, I took it out in one piece. They're really simple and uh, I plan on going through all the interior stuff with you guys in the videos. Like I say, the rush here was getting it enclosed. So hopefully we'll have a lot more footage of all the other little detail items. And I also kind of want to cover some of the electrical stuff. Maybe that'll be helpful to somebody else um, when I go through and do the lights on the trailer and I do the... Uh, the wiring for the um the inverter so i mean there's nothing complicated about any of that stuff there's just a few details that we have to figure out as we're doing it pull some wires through the flooring things like that but that's about it for this video i'm um, sorry it's so rushed but i didn't think you guys needed to see you know hours of me screwing wood together things like that so hopefully the next one will be a little more detailed um i'll see you then